Ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's see the thing. We're potting it. We're potting it. What's up, guys? We're about to get started. Oh, do, do you look into that one? We look no, at each other. we look at each other. Okay. But I always start this a little bit before, and I just do weird stuff. Oh, okay. So, <clears throat> I'm. I always say this. I'm gonna give you a little intro. Awesome. And then I'll just say like welcome, and we'll just get the combo popping. Okay, we're gonna start recording. It's gonna count us in. Hmm. I'm editing this part out after. What is up, Earthlings? <laughs> Cat <laughs> here. Welcome to episode six. Uh, that's six for all you monolingual people. Episode six of this human thing, a podcast on the human experience. So, what is this human thing? Well, it's everything. It's life, and life is all encompassing. It's not one thing. We can't define it, but through connection with ourselves and others, we can understand it. Not through intellect, but through a deeper, innate understanding. We could never describe our human experience accurately with words, but through this beautiful thing called language, we're able to point towards this innate understanding and share that experience with others. And how freaking dope is that? <laughs> so today I have sitting across from me the one and only Audrey Stenerson. Audrey's been visiting me here in San Diego for the past two weeks, and oh boy, it has been such a treat. It's uh, so interesting to think that we really haven't spent much time with each other uh, for almost an entire year, but it's so special that we're able to pick right back up where we left off and reconnect um, with having done so much individual growth apart. And so... We, just like Eliza in last week's episode, lived together for our senior year of college. And after I did my yoga uh, training in Bali after graduation, we traveled Bali together, met up with each other, and traveled through Thailand together along with our friend Lucia. Um, Audrey is a health nut, a fitness... <laughs> Sorry, do you not like that term? <laughs> it just sounds so silly. I don't know. A health nut. <laughs> you can pick which kind of nut pistachio i feel like you're kind of a pistachio. cashew okay <clears throat> cashew <laughs> she's a fitness killer and nature lover okay do you not like these i'm trying to make it sound catchy it's hilarious okay she's gone through yoga training herself and continues her studies of the spiritual side of life through many different mediums however currently her passions seem to lie in holistic health and how we can heal and flourish through the merging of traditional and alternative medicines and this means health that is preventative healing with the food we eat our sleep our thoughts our emotions how we move our bodies and how we can supplement in ways uh, in which western medicine does not promote so Audrey has the most generous and loving heart. She is kind and gentle, but unafraid to stand up for herself and for those she loves when the circumstance asks for it. I love her for everything she is, but I love how we can goof off and be ridiculous together, but also get so deep and intimate in our conversations. Um, and although your mind may tell you differently, when you do speak, it is it sounds like it's from a very grounded place. So that's such an awesome quality to have. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's just a tiny snapshot of Audrey's world, and it's continuing to expand. We've spent a lot of time daydreaming this week. We've had so many really good conversations, which we'll definitely get into on this episode. But without further ado, Audrey Stenerson, everybody, <laughs> welcome. Thanks for being on. I'm so nervous, <laughs> but thank you. That was so sweet. I love that intro. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you on too. Well, I'll start it out just with something a little bit uh, more <clears throat> light. It's actually a, it's an interesting question. My friend Tommy sent it in and he wanted me to answer this on the podcast. So just to get the conversation beginning to flow or everything, because I always feel like the first 15 minutes of the podcast feel a little bit awkward. Awkward as hell. So yeah. just to get the conversation flowing, Tommy asked, what does it mean to you to be a good ancestor? 
Oh my goodness. Isn't that such an interesting question? That's such an interesting question. Do you think he meant like um, for your future future generations? I suppose. I guess you could interpret it in any way you like. So like my great, 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 great grandchild thinking about me as an ancestor. Perhaps. Mm. I guess that kind of would tie for me into just like how can I make my life have meaning? Mm. Happiness. Happiness is probably the answer that I would have as an overarching theme. I mean, I want, I would want to look back at, at my ancestors and be like, wow, what a rad girl. What a rad chick. She did some really cool stuff. Like, right. I, I want to be one of those, like, people who are super old and still are able to, like, get around and do some crazy stuff. Because I feel like once you get old, like as an old lady i don't want to be decrepit and crippled i want to be killing like, it killing it biking, riding motorcycles hiking, <laughs> riding motorcycles maybe not motorcycles scare me so much actually that's pretty rad but yeah doing some stuff like i don't know i want to like i feel like cool ancestors like in people's families you're like oh i had this ancestor who did something and they were famous for it but that's so true I, people will there's like little memorable moments yeah. where they did this. I'm like, oh, I had this, like, for example, guys, I'm like less than 1% Cherokee. Oh, but yeah, right. see, I don't know anything about my Cherokee lineage except for the reason that I have Cherokee blood in me is because there was some prostitution going on. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> so see, I don't know Whoa. anything except for that. But that's when I think, like, oh, my ancestors just sleeping around <laughs> prostituting people yeah i mean or like <clears throat> i don't know I'm, i don't i can't think of anything that i like i don't have any famous ancestors but i feel like people who do like will let you know immediately mm -hmm. and it's normally that they've done something that's like well renowned or, or something that's made them famous but this is something really cool to think about like because we're in this age of technology our great great grandchildren are gonna be able to like look up our instagram <laughs> Do you think that'll exist? I'm like, sure. can Instagram's archive go on forever? I feel like, yeah. Why? Because, you know, on Facebook, if someone dies, they'll turn it into a legacy page, so their profile's still active. I feel like once that's the case, like, Instagram won't be a thing anymore. Yeah. It'll but be, it, like, there'll be something like that. Like, because people want to be remembered. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. why people want to be famous and they want to accomplish something in this lifetime because, like, even if I die, I want my legacy to move on. I want my name to live on in some way. So I think that with this emergence of social media and everything, I think that there is going to be some kind of archive or something that will kind of keep you still alive and your, like, story still alive just in the same way that, like, maybe your Instagram or something like yeah. that will still be I active. mean, totally. We're kind of the first generation that's had, like, digital like memories instead of like physical photos like everything's digital now so it can live on forever which is cool also kind of not cool i think that like like photos are retro now which is super weird to have a physical photograph yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's odd no what definitely think when i think of how can i be an ancestor it definitely like parallels with what you were saying earlier because i think back to how our genetics and our dna like pass down trauma and so they can mm -hmm. like pass down traumatic events but they can also pass down like oh like if my mom was a super super happy person some of that dna is going to be in me and i will be more predisposed to be a happy person so i think like you were saying just by living our lives in a joyous and loving way like even down to like our genetics that's going to pass through and affect our future generations totally and not only by genetics but by like stories i feel like when you talk about an ancestor like <clears throat> even some like someone like your grandparent not necessarily like someone far far off in the distance but you'll be you most people recognize them as being like positive people or like lights or like happy people that's what people remember if you're a sour person a sour puss i feel like you're not really talked about you're kind of like that's erased true. from the ancestor tree kind of yeah and I think about more of, 
like village cultures and tribal cultures and maybe more like eastern cultures it's still definitely something that happens here it's just less prevalent where like you go to your grandma or you go to these older people these elders in your community or your family and like that's like your source of wisdom and they can like no matter what like always look at you with unconditional love and like help you like find your path and stuff like that like when I'm a grandmother like I want to be that place that like my grandkids can come to and be like oh grandma that's so weird to think about old cat dude you've been talking so much this week about how like you're scared to get old kind of it's scary to get old I've definitely brought that up a few times Mm -hmm. because when Audrey and I are laying on the beach we're just like oh look at this like thing on my body that we because we're we're both well you're 22 I'm 23 Mm -hmm. um I just turned 23 (laughs) freshly 23 but we will like notice we're like oh my god like a wrinkle like oh my god look at this vein like look at this like whatever and we're just like starting to see these very 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 early signs of aging yeah and our bodies are decaying like from the moment we're born Uh, which is so weird to think about i hate that thought decaying no it is though we grow and then we outgrow our bodies Decay. Yeah, I, d- I think of like decay and I think of like bugs eating mm. me in the dirt mm. and I hate that but you're right I mean you can look at it either yeah. way like I kind of from the moment you're born you're dying mm. but also from the moment you're born you're, you're living. living it's kind of both I guess yeah a good ancestor great question Tommy and I guess also just like making the world a better place for future generations even outside of your own person and you know that's going to look different for every person but just how can you make a positive impact on this earth thinking outside of yourself yeah I think just like being a good human Mm -hmm. part of this human thing (laughs) is I think that one of the most important things is just like living the best life for you but also like for other people because <clears throat> this world would be nothing without other people beside yourself. Your world would be nothing. No, definitely. And we've been talking about this subject a lot this week too, of like finding that balance be- between being a selfless person and between like caring about yourself because it's tricky. Like you get a lot of people are pulled into either extreme. And uh, when we were camping, like something that got brought up for me is I was like, I often like harp on the fact that I feel like I'm always being selfish mm-hmm. even though objectively I'm not it's always it's always like kind of this little itch I'm like oh my god I'm being selfish but like we're in our bodies we're only seeing through our own view and perspective like we're in a self for a reason we have this like I don't know uh feeling or like manifestation as being like these separate individuals because we're supposed to focus on ourselves and there's definitely a difference between being like self um, absorbed and self-obsessed and like being like selfish I saw something one time that's like you know everyone is selfish because everything you're seeing through the eyes of yourself yeah so you can't have an experience usually (laughs) outside of yourself but yeah there's like selfish and then selfish yeah I mean it's like (laughs) like another thing that we we've been talking a lot this week we've had some great conversations sorry you missed out (laughs) but something else that we've been talking a lot about is is just like balance and with everything it's a balance you can't just always be thinking about yourself obviously and you can't always be thinking about others obviously and it's it's not necessarily that you have to live in equilibrium but like bouncing back and forth is okay and that's definitely something that I have taught myself and learned especially recently is like you think that you have to be this completely selfless person that's kind of how I I guess like have lived up until this point it's like you always want to be doing things for others and you want to be helping them which is important but that's not fair to yourself you need to give yourself space time and grace and if you don't then your quality of living is going to the shitter where you might be helping other people live a higher quality life but if you're not then yeah at the end of the day when you're just by yourself and you're just like damn and that's like where self-love comes in as we were like talking about too is you know sending all your love out to other people and then at the end of the day you're just like oh what about this one (laughs) yeah oh my gosh cat 
Eliza and I last week did a full moon meditation <clears throat> where we, um, you know, wrote something down that we wanted to release from our lives in the next month and then something that we wanted to add to it or like invite invite mm-hmm. into our lives. And the one thing that I wanted to invite into my life was self-love. And I think that I've been thinking about self-love a lot recently. And so like kind of verbalizing that, putting it out into the universe and sharing it with you two, I've been thinking about it and not like obsessing over it, but really paying attention to like every little thing and how I can love myself through every little thing. All of our meditations that we've had this week, I've been thinking of self-love in the background and it feels so good. It feels so good. It's like coming home. It's like coming home. It's so beautiful. Like, ah, it's, it's emotional, but and it seems like something so simple and kind of cliche. It's like, oh, love yourself. But for real, man, like, you know what? It's hard to give yourself enough space when there's so much other shit that you're balancing. But, like, really taking that time and space to be able to do that, I'm so grateful for the past two weeks that you've given me here because I I wouldn't have given myself that time. It's like, I don't know. I can't. I don't know. It just, like, doesn't feel worth it. But when you really, like, put your time and effort into it, it's, like, it's so worth it. It gives me goosebumps. I mm-hmm. think I have I'm, like, goosebumps. tearing up right now. <laughs> <laughs> but really, like, you don't really notice it at the time, but just looking back on these past two weeks that you guys have been there, like, we've gone through a lot of transformation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, just, like, mostly mentally. I mean, all yeah. mentally. It's just... But um, that's the first step. Yeah. I've, it's just... The past two weeks like I've actually had the space to do that and it feels so good like I don't know the last time I felt this good honestly because again I haven't had the time to like love myself and pay attention to the things that I'm like are way back deep in my brain they've been brought to the to the front and through like conversation and contemplation and space and time and being across the country right now it's been so cool yeah really just giving yourself that space is just so valuable and again so overlooked all of these things sound so cliche but Mm -hmm. that's why they're so cliche is because they're said over and over and over because of how important they are yeah and I don't think like I think because they sounded so cliche I kind of was turned off um I mean obviously I'm always like you know self-love of course blah but never gave myself like the energy like never put any energy to it Mm -hmm. because it was just like oh yeah this is obvious Mm -hmm. of course I don't need to think about it it just is yeah and we always go looking for something more complicated and we think that something more complicated is more true in some way Mm -hmm. when it's like your brain is like always like "Hmm, yeah but what else Mm -hmm. what else but how can I twist that yeah definitely Hmm. no it's been really good and uh, Audrey and I have been talking over the past it's really been a lot like this week like definitely all these ideas were like stirring and culminating while mm-hmm. Eliza was still here too but then them like starting to feel really real has been this week like for both of us like in both of our journeys there's a lot of changes ahead of us coming up I'm so excited I'm so excited I'm so excited it's terrifying but it's so exciting talk about some of your some of mine yeah okay it might be a little bit long but we'll get into it so hmm (laughs) there's so much (laughs) yeah there's so much like where do I start so I'm living in San Diego right now right yeah Mm -hmm. um I moved here in January of this year so I've been here well like mid-January so I've been here yeah about eight months which is wild really weird to think about and like I always just felt called to come here I don't know why it was just a feeling and I was like all right here I go (laughs) and it's been really great just to look back on this past year and just see all the growth and it makes me really excited because each year that I've lived I feel like each new year has been just more growth and more growth I'm like wow like it's like things are really accelerating because like that momentum is going um And so my roommate, Teddy, is moving to Colorado at some point, upcoming. 
and like he doesn't know when he hasn't like figured out all the logistics logistics but that's what he's gonna do he just wasn't happy here um which is totally fine and i definitely have some anger and resentment towards the lack of communication but i was able to let that out because as audrey and i were talking about before so often we are so focused outside of ourselves and how we can love those outside of ourselves and so again this was my like quote unquote fault i was doing this but i was just pouring so much of my energy both um like physically and then mentally when i wasn't even like in the situation like into making sure that he was okay because like he's my friend and i care about him but i think i reached a point where i was like so exhausted and i remember i was talking on the phone with audrey and i was like but what about me what about cat like Mm -hmm. and i just hadn't even really had those thoughts before just because as i was speaking on last week's episode like i really always am okay But there's also like material things that we need to worry about. And even though we're always okay on the inside, like we still have personal relationships and things still can be messy. And we need to pay attention to those things just as much as we pay attention to like the stillness, like spiritual thing inside of us, like communicating and letting your emotions out, like whether that be anger or like sadness or whatever it is, like letting yourself express those things it's not wrong like someone who is like quote unquote like super like spiritual and woke like they should still get angry like jesus like got pissed off all the time i would never want to not have emotions yeah that's not the goal that's that's the human experience Mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people get that twisted it's like you think that you're a zen master you just sit there everything passes over you you're non-reactive i'm like oh how dull we came here to have a human experience not to (laughs) retreat into a little monk body yeah totally i mean that's just like the perception i don't you know that's absolutely i mean i think that what you were just explaining too is a selfishness versus selflessness and you were very unbalanced and you just teetered yourself a little bit backwards but you've definitely like in the past couple of days especially like come to that realization and I can see you like kind of shift and settle back in which is refreshing no it's so refreshing because like I didn't think for some reason like I didn't think that I could like give that energy to myself which again like sounds so silly Mm -hmm. but experiencing that it's like a big like pressures off you know and like how can we like be there for other people but know that like you come first which again sounds selfish but you really do need to come first and how that looks and how that uh yeah like how that looks like is gonna vary and again it's like that balance but just think about this like if someone is sick and you're sick like with i don't know an injury the corona um you're not going to be able to heal that person unless you have at least a little bit of recovery so that yeah like if you have the flu or something you're in bed with a huge fever someone's in bed with a huge fever next to you like you need to recover a little bit before you're actually able to help them yeah um so no definitely i mean it's kind of like <clears throat> you can use the analogy of like being in an airplane when those when you're going down really fast and your air tank or whatever mm-hmm. it drops you have to put it on yourself before you put it on the person next to you or the child i mean it's all about loving yourself first and I feel like that's said all the time another cliche thing is like you can't love anyone else until you love yourself and that's easy to say hard to grasp like really you have to experience it to to know it true um and that's something also that I have definitely been experiencing just like the last couple of months very very intensely since I've been here focusing on like I think something that you said like maybe one of the first days that I got here really resonated with me and it was I think you said something like when you experience something and you really sit with yourself and tell yourself I love you no matter what I will be here for you I'm going to love you through this it's you and me and like really believing that and practicing that is like everything everything but I've thought about that a lot especially Mm -hmm. in the meditations that we've been doing like that kind of your voice saying that it didn't sound exactly the way that I said it I'm not as good of a speaker as Kat but meh yeah (laughs) I mean I don't know how to talk yeah (laughs) talking 
symbolism <laughs> what is it anyways but yeah i mean i'm i'm proud of you to like i watched you just like go through that in the past couple of days and you handled it so well oh thanks yeah i mean i like i'm i was just observing i mean you were you were kind of like expressing yourself to me i didn't help i just watched and it was pretty beautiful to see that but you were able to like sit there and hold space for me which is so special and i'm so grateful for that because this is just something that I am like is often like I won't express certain things to other people and I've gotten so much better at this Mm -hmm. but just because I'm like eh, my problem's not that bad or even if it is a bad problem like "Eh, it's fine I don't need to like burden someone Mm -hmm. else with it or like I'm almost like too exhausted to like outwardly express it or something because I'm just like oh now I have to like think about this more but uh, it does feel really good And we were actually, as Audrey and I were falling asleep last night, we were talking, or maybe this wasn't, I think it was last night actually, we were talking about how feeling these quote unquote negative emotions actually doesn't feel bad if you're feeling them with clarity. And so you can feel so, so sad and it can feel so beautiful. It's like almost like our emotions are cinematic in some way when you're watching a movie and it's like a really sad scene and like it's heart-wrenching but like it's beautiful you're at the feeling. same time mm-hmm. yeah and the same thing with anger like it can feel yeah almost like beautiful in a way because it's just like so much power and so much passion, passion. that's what you said you're like cat like you're this just shows like how passionate you are and yeah so like any of those negative emotions if you feel them with clarity they feel good and it feels right like you're not necessarily hurting someone else you're just letting yourself feel those things and letting those things pass through you but we were thinking and we were talking about how in contrast um when we're feeling foggy and we're feeling murky and dense um and we're feeling quote-unquote bad why does that not feel like the negative good feeling when your clear emotions feel like like why is it seems like (laughs) our minds have two states and it's definitely a spectrum of being clear and foggy Mm -hmm. and when we're clear even the bad emotions like kind of feel good Mm -hmm. and when we're foggy it's like the good emotions like it feels like good but it's still like we're finding problems with it and when we have like the bad emotions it just makes the badness feel even worse and talk about what you said about why bad emotion or like why we just feel bad when we're foggy because I hadn't thought about it this way and so next time I'm in a fog I'm really gonna practice this because like that stood out so much to me and it just made sense it's just kind of a theory that I thought up okay well I think it I think it's true (laughs) sleepy pillow talk um I think I said something like uh like our our brains in those foggy moments because I think everyone has them like they might not be as intense for some people but like I know for Kat and I specifically, they've been pretty intense in experiences that we've had with each other, for example, in Thailand and mm-hmm. Bali, or Thailand mostly. But um, yeah, I think that they're, your brain kind of needs a break from emotions. And in those foggy, foggy parts um, or foggy instances, your brain is kind of just like released all emotion and it is like recharging, I think is what I said. No. I can't really remember. <laughs> um, That's a cool theory, though, too. I don't remember what I said. So I just hit the table. Um, so you said that when we're feeling foggy, it's because we're like we're confused about what we're feeling. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm. So it's like when we're when we're in a fog, where we feel bad, and we can kind of pinpoint like different problems that like might point to like why we're feeling bad, whether those be emotions or like habits that or whatever life circumstances are happening but even if you were to like address that problem you would still feel bad so it's just like you're confused as to why you're feeling bad you can't pin an emotion Mm -hmm. to it yeah exactly that's so so interesting Mm -hmm. that came out of your brain i know (laughs) and i couldn't even re-say it when i (laughs) whatever (laughs) cool yeah but it's like the reason that we're in that fog is because like we're confused as to what emotions we're feeling and it'll be interesting if when next time I experience or when we both experience a fog session Mm -hmm. to just try to like and again this is so much easier said than done because when we're foggy we feel closed off Um, but to just like like give yourself 
extra grace and extra compassion with this thought that you're just trying to like find an emotional outlet um I mean you're kind of you can envision yourself like kind of swimming through really really dirty water and you're just like swimming and parting it and it's okay to not know where you're going necessarily because eventually you'll get there um but I think that this thought is is something nice to come back to to touch on because it kind of gives you that reason answer so even when you're feeling bad you kind of know okay this is why and maybe that helps Mm -hmm. you get out of it quicker or maybe it's just gives you like more patience Mm -hmm. because my patience to get through the foggy stuff is like it's temporary and there's a lesson from this and I'm always okay deep down but which is fine and good but it's nice to have this additional um thing yeah anyway (laughs) wait tell okay continue talking about dreams and aspirations okay manifestation so yeah circling back to where our conversation sidetracked um yeah so in the next couple months I'm going to have to find another place to live and I feel so blessed to have met so many amazing people out here so blessed um but I do need to find a living situation and my financial situation is really really bad right now which is okay and it's fine I just money just comes and goes for me um but yeah that just adds an additional layer of uncertainty and um gunk gunk (laughs) but I'm also going back to work next week and again like there's like uncertainty there also because I'm going to be waitressing and with the whole uh pandemic situation like I just don't really know what the restaurants are like and how long that's going to be um and yeah so there's just like a lot of things changing my car is really messed up right now like I'm gonna have to like get a new car get it fixed at some point um but all of this stuff it you know like on a physical level or just hearing it like it sounds like really stressful but I don't know it just feels fine like I just feel fine like everything is like everything's always gonna work out and I'm honestly just excited because Audrey and I are both at a point right now where I feel like we're like standing I was writing about this and uh when we were journaling today I just like Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm standing at this door or at this gate and I'm just looking out at all these possibilities that are the future and it's like crazy and there's so many different paths I could go down but it's just so excited and I like I can't wait to jump in and oh I love that <laughs> visual oh, I get that right now I'm seeing you like standing on your tippy toes looking, looking over a gate yeah like with your eyes wide that's yeah. so cute God. Uh, but that's what it feels like <clears> and <throat> just so anyway I just lost my train of thought but it's interesting because a few days after this date pass that I'm going to expand upon um there was this astrological um, phenomenon. Phen- yeah, I don't even know what it's called. I'm not super big into astrology, but there was this uh, event called the Lion's Gate, which was on August 8th. And August 8th was a day that Audrey and I did this meditation and she had this like vision of her future life and what that's going to look like. And I didn't even realize it at the time but a couple days later I saw somewhere like some article about the lion's gate and I read about it and so it's like eight is some kind of significant number in numerology and in astrology and I think I could be totally wrong but it's like some planet is in some kind of alignment with the sun and that does something in astrology but uh, the takeaway from that is it's supposed to be the significant date or the significant time and it's not only on August 8th but that's like the peak point of just an openness for new possibility in your life and there's like a big shift of change and you can dive into that and explore that or because it's an opportunity and you can take that opportunity of like this time or you can just kind of like see it and be like eh, too scared too comfortable here and just let it pass and you've missed it and I think that you know metaphor it could be a metaphor or a real thing I don't really know but whatever that is I feel like we are in that we're standing at that gate right now and there's just so much potential for where our lives are going to head and it just seems 
and we were laying on the beach yesterday and I'm like the future just seems like so bright and so certain and like it literally feels like there's this like warm hug inviting me like into Mm -hmm. the future not as like a place to go rest but just like getting closer to your higher self whatever that means and just living life more and connecting deeper and just the journey is like taking a an exciting chapter twist yeah yeah I definitely feel so clear right now I mean the meditation that Kat was referencing that we had the other day I literally laid down for like 20 or 30 minutes and completely envisioned like my future self it wasn't just like oh like I might do this and that it was literally me like I I was seeing myself I was watching myself and like getting into the specifics it was like me living in the mountains and I had this like little deck and I would do yoga there and I was gardening and I was doing pottery which like I've always been into pottery but like it wasn't something that I really thought about and I had this job it, I wish that it were clear on what job it was because that would be really cool if I could just be like mm, cool I'm gonna go pursue this we'll just have another vision it's fine right I'll just have <laughs> another vision I'll just manifest that vision but I was doing something that allowed me to express myself creatively and was fulfilling and I had circles of and communities of friends who like supported me and were really interested in everything that I was into and helped me grow and blossom and it was just I had a dog which is was like so exciting for me to see because I've been thinking constantly about getting a dog like I think that's definitely one of my goals for the next year is to get a little doge and have a garden I just oh my goodness and so since then I've been thinking about this non-stop and I've had this like dream to go to Boulder Colorado and I think I'm just gonna end up doing it by myself because it's I feel that pulled to it which is so cool I've never had that feeling before like you know you have a dream and you're like oh that's wicked like interesting now I'll start thinking about it it's it was like oh I had this vision and like this is it like I am already and I'm actually reading this book right now that ties into it really well Um, it's called um, (sighs) breaking the habit of healing yourself which I found randomly in the airport it's by Joe Dispenza and it's kind of he has a lot of like quantum physics tied in with um, like creating the life that you want and he talks a lot about I'm only like a I think I'm on the second chapter. They're long chapters, okay? (laughs) But he talks about how you you basically have to, like, already be grateful. Like, you have to live as that person um, that you're, like, envisioning. Like, you are that person. Once you have that vision, you manifest it, and you are that person. You live as that person, and that's how, you know, the universe will understand that you really, really want something and that that is the only acceptable thing for it to give you. So that's really cool. And I think that that's something that I like am really coming to know. And I think that I always thought of manifestation kind of as like hmm, putting like making a wish, which it kind of is. If you think about it, you're like wishing for something. But in on the flip side, kind of what I've learned lately is that you, you actually have to like believe it when you wish for something. You're like, oh, like it's a lot this of is doubt. so out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it could happen or it could not. But when you manifest something, like, it is going to be. And that's something that I've been practicing a lot, too. And I I think that you have, too, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, you're not. (laughs) Nice. Yeah, because, like, once you believe that to be true, you're like, oh, this is going to happen. And you really believe that it's going to happen. There's no doubt in your mind because that pull was so strong and you've been sensitive enough to listen to your intuition and be able to follow that and you know that's never going to be wrong and you're never going to live with regrets if you live that way that was something that um audrey and a couple of my friends we were walking back from the beach yesterday like after we had watched the sunset it was beautiful Beautiful. um (laughs) but i was just talking about like when you become so sensitive to (laughs) like following your heart and like listening to you know it almost seems like it's not you who's asking you to do these things it's just because it seems so clear and so certain and when you begin to listen to that and be sensitive to that and you're gonna look back on your life and you're gonna be like damn 
I, I lived. I wasn't just you know, waiting around for something to happen to me. I wasn't living out of fear, so I go out and I try to do everything that society tells me that I should do. Like, I was so in touch with myself and so in touch with life and the people around me that I was able to recognize these opportunities and recognize these pulls that are, like, pulling me (laughs) and following that and, like, following your dreams and even if stuff doesn't work out you're never gonna regret it because you're like no like that's what i wanted to do i was doing this like for me and by doing it for you like out of again it's not like a selfish place it's like no this is like in the workings of like a larger thing and i'll be able to serve and love better from this location like i'm i'm not rushing towards that place i'm not trying to escape where i am now but i just see that this is the next chapter for me to develop more and to from that platform be able to love and serve even more it's like you're leveling up and you have like more power and more security in yourself so that again you're a full cup to pour out to other people and I don't know I just feel like for me again there's a lot of uncertainty in my life and a lot of things that from an outside perspective like might look like oh why is she doing that oh why is she doing that and that's totally fine like I can see that objectively as well but like I don't have any fear towards what I'm going towards because even though the specifics aren't uh, known to me, like I know the direction that I'm going in and like I can never second guess that to be wrong because it just feels so right. And it's, yeah, it's almost like this thing. I'm like, I can't argue with that. Yeah, trust the universe, baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I like, um, since we were, we, yesterday we were kind of like joking about like higher self and like portals and things like that <laughs> like new age sounding yeah. super new age oh my god i looked through the portal and i saw my higher self and her chakras were so aligned <laughs> we were talking about like how i would like present this vision to my mom and <laughs> what she would think mom i went through the portal <laughs> listen mom i really saw my higher self and she was so aligned in every way and she's taking me through this portal and <laughs> she my mom would be like hell is you talking about honey that's so what you talking great. about yeah but i really like thinking about like you coming closer to your higher self which isn't a way that i i thought about it before but i really love that um that's such a cool way of viewing it like it's you it's just in you the future in the future and in your best shoes and she's just calling you and she already exists because you can think about it like We're here in this present moment, past happened, cool, done, and we take those lessons with us so that we can, you know, understand life a little bit better, Mm -hmm. move with more, like, clarity and more discernment and all that, but from this point, there are, like, infinite timelines that could happen depending on where life takes us or what decisions we're making, and so whatever it is that you want, like, that, you know, higher self that's out there she on one of those timelines or he on one of those timelines is already exists in a future moment and so if you are able to again like this sounds like very like woo woo but just like think about it like if you're able to quote unquote listen to that person in the future and maybe it's as much as thinking of like okay how do i get there you can you can literally do that like it is so possible you know like you're not gonna like grow wings and fly off into the sunset but like usually the dreams that we have aren't unrealistic right yeah just like listen to her advice Mm -hmm. because she talks to you all the time that's what those visions and dreams are yeah in my mind yeah that's yeah it's all the same thing it's like listening to your heart listening to your intuition listening to your soul being sensitive to like little like symbols and signs that you might like see as you go throughout your everyday life and you can think of it as like this spiritual thing or you can think of it as oh this is really cool I'm exploring this human experience and like wow look at all these little synchronicities and what I can create and what I can experience in this thing that I just kind of plopped into yeah it's also interesting like it kind of feels like a little bit like a race which I don't think is necessarily a good thing like you want with age obviously you get closer to that person because you have more experience and you're able to like have different experiences and um I mean 
you, you grow older, you grow wiser with those things that you do and all of these places you go and people you meet. But it feels like kind of like a race in that you want to get there before you're old. Like mm. you don't want to wait until you're 80 years old and then be like, oh, okay, now I understand. You want to get there when you're young and then be able to live as openly as you can and as close to that person as you possibly can so like but I don't think that's really possible like does that make sense I don't know that you can necessarily reach her I think she's always like something to look forward to yeah but it feels like you can always be doing something more no I definitely agree and I think that that's just like the um the feeling of that something's lacking mm. and the reason that we want to get to our higher self is because like we want to feel safe and we want to feel whole and all of those things and we think that like we can't start truly living until we're there and I think in order to like even get to her we have to recognize that we're fully living now and we're fully safe now because like a couple years ago like you right here you're that future self you're a higher self and again it's higher self not highest self you're never going to reach absolute but you know right now we're envisioning you're envisioning this higher self who is living in boulder and has her garden and her pottery and her dog and her awesome job but once you're her there's going to be another higher self that's like hey now this and so i think that we're constantly moving towards a higher self but we're never going to get there and so it really is a matter of just like letting go into where we are right now and saying like I actually am my higher self right now and I'm completely safe and full and whole right now and that just relieves some pressure to know that there isn't a rush and that whether you have the like mental idea that you're rushing or not like everything's going to unfold at the pace that it's going to unfold whether you stress out about it yeah like right now I mean there is definitely an ebb and flow and like in this time there's so much energy that's pushing us to go faster there are crests and peaks and right now I feel like we're definitely at a peak like I'm I have so much motivation and I know I can know that I I'm noting that I have all this motivation because it's abnormal it's not like what I have been feeling like <clears throat> recently mm-hmm. um like kind of ever so it's so exciting like I, I, I know. am just living like through I mean I'm living like through my own experience too but also living so like vicariously through you because it's just so so awesome to see you like this I know <laughs> and I, I do have a little bit of a fear like I'm going to Denver today I fly out today and then I will be there camping through the weekend and then I fly home on Monday um and I'm scared to start work on Tuesday because I, I'm just scared that, like, you know, the fitting that glove of that routine that I was in every day kind of might cloud things or I'll forget to give myself that space. I mean, I know that I'll give myself space, so much more space than I was giving myself before, but I don't want to, like, let up on that. And that's going to be hard. I really have to think about that. And, and well, like, please, like, keep in contact with me. We can really support each other dude, through this. yes. Oh, my God. I can't believe that we... Ha- I was telling you this last night, but I can't believe that we haven't seen each other in, like, a year. What yeah. the hell? It doesn't feel like it's no. been that long, but... I know, but... And yeah. we, like... Uh, also like we've had so much life experience and have hardly shared it and now that we're back together we're culminating this like incredible future like yeah. so but it couldn't much. have been any other way but... I know and it's so cool it's just like I'm so appreciative like thank you yeah thank you that's <laughs> it's awesome everything yes and Dude, um, uh, this is something else I keep forgetting about this, but Audrey and I are going to go to Peru in April. <laughs> How could you forget? How well, could you forget? It, keep, like, it keeps slipping my mind because uh, it's like so far in the future, but every once in a while it a pops in little... and I'm just like, ah. Yes. We're going to head to Peru, hopefully. In, no, we will head to Peru in April and we'll have some fun, yeah. bop around, visit Mama Aya. Well, we're going to a uh, ayahuasca retreat. <laughs> yeah, Mama Aya. Oh, that's what she's called. I don't know. It just sounds just now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. From now her. on, I guess. Yeah. Um. So that is going to be incredible. Yeah. But there's all like there's just so much to look forward to. Like, the next couple months are gonna be 
just so much change and it's going to be so exciting and like if we can move through that with a lot of clarity and trust like every step of the way is going to be so so exciting and going to be you know there's going to be so many ups and downs there's going to be like really stressful situations and really like exciting beautiful situations and times where we can rest and absorb and reflect but throughout it all like it's going to be so crazy and I feel like that's just like how life has been like it's just as we become more clear and more certain of ourselves we get to understand and connect with life more like everything just becomes so exciting yeah I mean I'm not that I'm wishing this time away but like I'm so excited for when we can like when I leave here and we start all of this shifting and we go through that shift whatever it may be however it manifests and can look back and be like god damn we wow that is so cool like Mm -hmm. i'm I'm not i don't want to wish that time away and i'm so excited to actually experience it Mm -hmm. but like especially over the past year like all of the transformation that i've made i've been like looking back like oh my god like like you said at the beginning of the podcast like we have done some crazy crazy growing like internally the first day that i was here we were walking on the beach to the nice nice public restroom um yikes but and you were talking about like how profound and like just elite and like different this past year has been for you and same and like like oh my god I've gone through so much pain and I know that you've gone through difficult times too but it's like so beautiful Mm -hmm. it's so beautiful to be able to look back in it and you trudge through that mud and you're like, oh my gosh, will, will it ever like lighten up? But it does. And when it does and you can look back at it, it's so it's like a flower. Oh my God. I'm a, yeah. I am a literal flower. I like literally, I blossomed from this little tiny little seed into a fucking flower this year. And that's so crazy. That's so amazing. Mm-hmm. Like think of all the things that we've done and all of the changes that we've made. Wow. Like, wow. You're yeah. over here. I, the first time that I met you, like, I remember you talking about when we first started living together, like, San Diego and moving to California, and I was like, damn, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> but you did it. Like, you did it. That's wild, Kat. You moved across the country. And you're about to. Yes, I am. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. But no, it's, it's so beautiful to look back at because... I'm just I'm gonna sound like I'm just repeating what you said because I am um but yeah like all of that pain all of those really hard times like I literally would not trade it for anything because like I want to live fully and living fully means that you feel fucking awful sometimes and that lend like that leads to you having greater empathy for other people you can connect more to them this is like what Eliza and I were talking about Mm. last week and um, sometimes Audrey and I share a little frustration about some of our friends because we're just like oh like some of them just like they really haven't like experienced like anything like they don't know like really the the low lows but they also don't really know some of the high highs and again like for their experience it feels completely different but it's just us an outsider looking Mm -hmm. at them and it's only out of love it's just because we want them to be the best version of themselves too but again we can't force someone else to change we can't it's like the allegory of the cave which i've talked about before on the podcast like it's we're trying to show them we're like look you're really missing out but they're just like no dude i'm just in this cave yeah yeah and i'm like no no you Mm -hmm. need to go out and take chances and da 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 because you're living halfway and oh like i just think back to myself who was living halfway and getting her out of that was not easy it was really hard but i would not trade it for anything yeah, I mean, you wouldn't have the views that you have unless you went through that, mm-hmm. which is a- another just part of like, there's always the pendulum is always swinging, like in, yeah. in everything. It's all about balance. It's hard to just be like perfect in the middle. Honestly, I just think of it almost as just unattainable. So that I don't think of it. I don't think of the pendulum sticking in the middle. I think I don't of, think it's supposed to. No. There's no life in the pendulum if it's stagnant. It exactly. needs to be moving. Exactly. And I think that that, again, like I think we already said this, but being conscious of that and knowing that like that stillness is not not necessarily the goal is really important Mm 
-hmm. And I think that consciousness is all about that and practicing, you know, whatever practices you have to like remind yourself of that is really important. And we can speak with it about this with such certainty because we've experienced it as true. And I think that that's something beautiful about like being so, this is like four agreements, like being impeccable with your word is that like, how can we lie about something or how can we try to make up something? Like when we're speaking right now, when it's just so true and like you know maybe it's not applicable to everyone maybe but when I've like shared stories and shared the experiences that are similar to this with other people they're just like yeah because we all humans tend to follow a same kind of pattern to growth and we were talking about this before and earlier in the week too like the order in which you grow might be different from other people but we all seem to have to go through the same things Mm -hmm. and yeah like I can just speak with such conviction and such certainty on this because it's like it literally couldn't be any other way it's just like once you've like seen something to be true like once you step outside of the cave in uh the allegory of the cave you're like obviously I'm like I can't lie about this I can't lie and say oh there's something outside of the cave like I literally was there yeah Mm -hmm. you can't make it up no yeah that's <clears throat> that was a good point that you came up with earlier in the week, Kat, where you said that like everyone has their own pace and their own steps. And like, I feel like it's so difficult to just say, do this, do this, please. Like, it will be better for you. Like, I want your experience to be everything that I know that it can be. But like, all you can do is say it. And words are just words, they're just symbols. You have mm-hmm. to actually experience it to like understand. So, I mean, you can like point people in that direction and like things like reading and and meditating and manifesting and <clears throat> like listening to what other people have experienced is is really important, but that's also just part of it. That's, that's just part of it. You have to actually experience it for yourself. And I think that a lot of people get caught up in like other people's experiences and like there are so many like amazing authors that that talk about their experience with it and they're like this was my experience and I think that this, that, and the other thing, like, I found these patterns, and you can say, oh, okay, I see these patterns, I see these patterns too, but you really don't, like, you really don't, you have to actually, like, experience life for yourself, and make sense of it for yourself, you can't take other people's, you know, theories and experiences as your own, because that's not authentic, that's not you, you're just adding more, like, yeah, like, books to your mind library, and you're not, like, getting out and experiencing life, because, ugh, Uh, where was I going with that I don't know um (laughs) yeah I mean it's important to read and like have those like other you know um lenses but Mm -hmm. if you're not doing it yourself then it's just clouding you and I think some people um have a misconception as to what going and experiencing for yourself and going and like living out the things that the books or teachers or whatever are pointing to I think that there's a little bit of a misconception of what it is to experience something for yourself Hmm. and that means when you're experiencing something for yourself that means that you're getting out and you're doing the human thing because you can sit in meditation all day you can have these awesome like transcendental experiences but you always have to come back to being human like we were placed here to be human and by trying to escape that you're literally cheating yourself out of this life that we have you're running away from what we were given this precious human thing yeah and like i'm really bad at losing my train of thought today i'm sorry um yeah but i don't know it's just so i'm gonna stop talking i don't know where i was going with that okay just trying to continue it okay dude we've done so much talking this week we've yeah. probably had like these conversations in in different ways like hundreds of times not hundreds of times well maybe tens of times well it, it always death. sounds different though like That's when we true. talk about it but mm-hmm. i think that it's the same thing which is kind of cool like mm-hmm. we're like oh this is this, this from angle this, lens, this yeah. angle this you know and we can learn more about it by seeing it from different angles and that's why it's like so cool to have different words to speak about things and to have different life experiences of kind of like the same like principle or the same lesson because you get to understand it by different angles and like thereby have a more holistic uh 
understanding and approach of all of that. Yeah, man, words are crazy. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we were talking about this week is, like, you kind of, like, pick and choose what words are appropriate for you and what resonates with you. For example, I think I was talking about, like, doing the quote-unquote work. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people talk about doing the work. But to me, the work is negative that's this is like in terms of like your personal growth or your like spiritual yes work exactly so instead of work I was talking to Kat about using growth like I don't I wouldn't say that I've done so much work over the past year I would say that I've grown so much over the past year and just like that makes me want to continue it work is arduous and hard and I just want to put a big frown on my face (laughs) and like work ew no growth and that could work for someone just doesn't work exactly for you. exactly and that's another thing that we talked about too is like when you have a conversation with someone you have to kind of communicate which communication is something that I am will preach forever and ever good mm-hmm. communication is so important but you know like in terms of communication when you're talking to people like some people like might not be okay with the way that you say something for example another example I feel like I've had a lot of examples (laughs) but we were talking about like learning about spirituality and how like everyone's experience um, is different how they're um, introduced to the idea of spirituality and like um, you know consciousness and if it's not the correct puzzle piece it's not going to fit for them so like there are many different instances where like I was introduced to spirituality when I was younger um, I was introduced to like Reiki yoga meditation um, by my friend, my best friend, Lucia's mom. She was very into that. And so when I was like as young as like literally like six years old, she was like talking about all of this stuff and it was so normal to me. Um, and so I kind of like experienced that growing up. And then when I went through Reiki and yoga teacher training, I was like a junior in high school, like that kind of like re-entered my life and then like I let go of it a little bit when I got into college um kind of forgot about it because you're doing a lot your freshman and sophomore years of college but by doing a lot we mean alcohol what no <laughs> alcohol I never touch I never the touch stuff. stuff um but then like it re-entered my life f- through like you know like anxiety and there were other paths that like tried to like insert themselves into my life like people would talk about it and like kind of say that it was this this is the way like you need to start meditating and you need to you know start being more conscious and you need to listen to this person and that person because that's how it is and they say it the way that it is and you know I was like okay well why and those people couldn't answer that question it's just this is it this is it like consciousness is the way to go like oh my god it's blah blah and it felt like if you can't answer my question then why would I give my energy to thinking about it and so since then obviously I've had experiences and like have gone through my own trial and error and have found it on my own but I never would have like I wouldn't have truly accepted it if I had taken it when those people in my life had just like blindly said this is the way check it out now I'd be like no I don't want to I'll check it out when I'm ready you know so it's all about like where it fits in your life that communication how it's said how you find it things like that oh definitely and it's like so true everyone has their own like introduction that works for them when it comes to spirituality and even using the word spirituality that will turn a lot of people off Mm -hmm. but the thing is like everyone should be in touch with their spirituality because like it kind of is what we are and you can call it whatever you want but so our friend Kyle was giving a little bit of feedback on the podcast the first episode where we were trying to define spirituality and he said that some guy again this is not verbatim but he said that some guy said that spirituality is having like this profound connection to life whatever life is just having this profound connection and that's what everyone wants really if you dig past all the layers of wanting the cars and wanting the sexy boyfriend and whatever like all we really want is to feel connected to 
everything we just want that connection and so that's like what spirituality is is just like feeling connected and feeling love and feeling safe and all of these things it's just about like living fully this human experience that we have and so that's going to again look different for every single person and you know maybe one person's spirituality is a certain religion maybe another person's spirituality is being really connected to nature another person's more of like new age spirituality another person's um i don't know something that seems like i don't know like maybe they're different yeah like their nutrition or something like it literally could be anything it's going to show up differently to every person but it's really the main theme being that you're feeling connected and that's like another reason like why i wanted to make this podcast is to like normalize this and say like literally it's it's not weird it's not something unattainable it's literally just you it's about you it's not about what we're speaking about right now it's about how you're showing up to yourself and like how can you connect more to life like what do you want and just by natural consequence by beginning to ask those questions you're gonna naturally like be such a light to the people around you like the people around you are going to benefit so much by you just as a natural consequence of you trying to like follow your truth yeah it'll rub off on people too which Mm -hmm. is so important I think people get so caught up in like what they're supposed to be doing and this is on all facets of life but like they're so caught up in like what what they think should be right because of again other people's experiences they forget to like live themselves yeah and that's what you're supposed to be doing you're supposed to be finding yourself quote unquote again another like new age sounding like cliche but you are like you're already in yourself the purpose of being a human or the purpose of life is to be a human being you're already doing that so like great job so now it's just a matter of like recognizing who you are and just like not even like searching but just really like getting curious about what life is and what you are while maintaining that balance of like you have responsibilities and you have material things that you need to pay attention to which can suck sometimes yeah which can suck like and you know like we want that contrast we don't just want the you know the blissy times we want the stressful times too because that's the well-rounded thing and we can say that when we're feeling good but when we're feeling bad it doesn't feel that way but it's nice to remember that yeah i mean Mm -hmm. in the good times it's hard to remember in the bad times but you can actually start to remember it in the bad times then the bad times they it's not like they feel any better but they kind of do well like, yeah it's they do a little bit easier yeah to get through because you're just like oh yeah i've been here before yeah and it's gonna look different but you you know where you are and you know that it's all a natural part of the growth <sighs> cool <laughs> anyway after that long ass spiel let me look into our little topics i'm sure that we probably Ooh. covered most of them um hmm. uh so I wanted to like go into like some more of your interests and Mm. I know that a big passion of yours and something that you're really hoping to pursue in your life is more of uh this holistic of holistic health and how we can heal through foods and like tying this into like Ayurveda and stuff like this some of these more eastern medicines And I wondered if you wanted to touch on that or whatever. You can even, like, dive into, like, what your dreams are with this. Like, what you hope to, like, create because of this. But then also just, like, your fascination with what already does exist. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that, like, holistic and integrative health and wellness is so cool. Like, I, I mean, living in the United States all of our lives, we, like, kind of only know one, one thing. And that is not preventative medicine it's the opposite it's when you're sick you take medicine and you get better but the whole concept behind medicine in the eastern culture and chinese medicine all of that is preventative it's like and it just makes so much sense to me and ever since i kind of started diving into it i I can't really even remember um when or how i got into it but i actually went into college being a kinesiology major um, thinking that I wanted to be like physical therapist or something like that because the human body has always fascinated me it's just like it's so cool man like it's so cool um, but that didn't work out <laughs> um, but I kind of was taking a few classes and like got into things um, 
that it that just made sense to me and they were mostly from the eastern culture so <clears throat> I got really into that and kind of like thinking about the body and like how we treat it and like what we put into it and how that affects us and like not just the body but like our mind and all of that type of thing um and how it all ties in with like being mindful it's just really cool um I recently got this book called um healing with whole foods from a friend like this past w- winter and it's just this big textbook full of like, all of this information I feel like I've hardly put a dent in it I've probably read like half of it I definitely want to reread it it's so interesting but there are so many different facets that you can dive into and it's just like I'm a person who has to have an answer like if if I have a question and there's no answer then I could care less about the topic anymore but because there's so much like Um, there's so many angles to everything in eastern medicine there's always an answer and I think that's why I like it so much Um, and in terms of medicine of that nature I think that food is particularly interesting because it's healing it can hurt you it can taste good or bad or feel a certain way in your mouth make your body feel a certain way make your mind feel a certain way and that's so interesting if you can hack that your like your experience is just so much better so like I mean I certainly have not hacked it even in the slightest I have hella health issues and I think that's another reason that I'm so interested in it is because like there's more of a this preventative mindset to eastern medicine and like holistic healing and things like that because I want to be able to like live my highest and be my healthiest and that's something that we've also been talking a lot about this week is that like I feel like everyone wants to be healthy. You you want to feel good at the end of the day. And there's so many different aspects to that. And food is so big. Food is so big. It can help you, like, your digestion. You, it can help your sleep. It can help your clarity. So interesting. So I think ideally, and I don't know how I'll get here, because it's going to take some more school. Um, and I don't have a lot of money right now. But I think that I would love to go into something that incorporates holistic nutrition, holistic health, not just like the one, not just diet, but like everything combined. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're kind of into it too. You're you're very in tune with yourself. It's really cool to like, you're very intuitive. And that's something that I think most people strive for. I definitely strive for it. Listening, being able to listen to your body and your mind and know that it's clear and is really telling you what it wants is is so important. And I don't think anyone, like like not anyone, a lo- some people do have this, but a lot of people don't. Most people don't. And I think that finding the answer to giving everyone or as many people as possible that intuitive like nature of going about how they treat their bodies is that will change the health of our nation of the world and I just think that's so cool no definitely and like for me I have so far to go but like even just like watching myself heal a lot um, both physically and mentally like all aspects and as we were talking about before we're just like viewing things from different angles there's an angle that you can view life from like the nutrition side you can view life from Uh, like the physical side you can view life from the spiritual or the mental side or the emotional side or the relational side like there's so many different angles to health which is like that's such a big aspect of connection is health because when you're healthy things are functioning you're not closed off in certain ways things are open and like inflammation is one of the markers of you know not being healthy and that's what lead that's like the leading cause of disease is inflammation and that's ways that like we've been closed off and there's blockages and there's things clashing um so scientific sounding um (laughs) but like by listening to yourself and like we can experience kind of like mental inflammation also like Mm -hmm. there's this conflict happening in our minds all the time we're constantly fighting with ourselves and by learning to be more sensitive to like just like pausing before you go and you like eat whatever you're gonna eat just like pause and be like do I want this like, is this going to feel good? 
and again you're you're not perfect but you just slowly learn with like time after time and just naturally you're going to shift to being that healthy person and like Audrey and I were talking about this before just like with food like some days we're like ravenous just like eating everything and where our minds are telling us oh my god you like you pig like you're gonna get so fat like you're not supposed to eat this much and then other days we just don't really have an appetite and then our minds are like you should eat something and then we eat and we like feel kind of like gunky and like heavy and then other times when we're ravenous and we don't eat then we're like feel weak Mm -hmm. you know and it's just like listening to like you don't need to eat the same thing or same amount every single day um like just really listening to your body and like you know maybe some days you just want to like eat a lot of fruit other days you just want to like eat with pop tarts like i don't know do you like listen to yourself there's only it's only you who really knows yeah it's hard because i think that our culture conditions us a lot to like we're all in our heads and we don't like experience our bodies for what they're trying what they try to tell us and so it becomes habitual that we are listening to what our mind says as opposed to what our body is telling us and you get like most people live that way their entire lives and it feels impossible for people to say oh just listen to your body when you've been out of touch with your body for most of your life like how the heck are you supposed to get back in touch with your body when like you've been listening to your head the whole time or like to what other people are saying that you should be doing and that's really hard I mean I haven't necessarily figured it out but me neither I mean it's it's again this is another thing that is so much about balance like nutrition and health overall is like 100% balanced you you want to treat your body as a temple because it is it's like your relationship with your mind and your body are the most important things the most important relationships that you'll have in your entire life so really like checking in with yourself and like knowing like that whatever you're thinking whatever your body's telling you is okay like it doesn't always have to be freaking celery yeah it doesn't have to i don't you don't have to drink celery juice for breakfast lunch and dinner like cake is delicious like i've been eating that for breakfast last week i ate a whole pie essentially to myself (laughs) that um cat's wonderful friend karen made it was amazing and i i had it for breakfast i had it for a snack and then i had it after dinner for dessert every day until it was gone and like i was you know we, we also had Kat's birthday cake and literally crushed it in two days. Granted, there were three of us, but mm. it was so good. And, like, you can't feel guilty for that stuff. And people do. And that's where you were kind of talking about that mind chatter. Like, when, when you're hungry and you eat, you feel guilty because you feel like you shouldn't be eating. And, like, why is that? It's not because your body is feeling guilty. It's because other people are telling you that you should be feeling guilty. And that, like, I I think that's something that a lot of people understand and that is preached now a lot. And that's really cool. But, like, people still don't believe it. Again, that can't just be another thing to tack on. Yeah, exactly. Like, you have to actually experience yourself, like, knowing that it's okay. And, like, your body telling you that it's okay. Exactly. you know, that's all a very long process that's probably going to take your whole life not to discourage you, but just to get excited that once you start paying attention like it's going to get easier and easier and easier yeah and I've definitely been in a place before where it seems like it's there like that's impossible um it's not going to get easier like you know I but whenever you're in that place it seems like such a dark hole and whether it's like with diet or your mentality you're anxious you're depressed but there's always like a light and you just have to work through it I mean like people's relationship with food is so fucked up nowadays but I think that diet culture thankfully is is like kind of closing a little bit like there's a lot more um respective you know like people on social media in particular and like things that are in the news about like the kind of flip side of diet culture that's now coming to light I, I hope it's not just like a phase you know I hope that people like stick with their intuition and like really listen to their bodies and this is another thing that is so self-love gets so wrapped up into like you have to love yourself through it all and trust yourself like that's all you have all you have is is you and so holding yourself when you feel bad and being like it's okay Mm -hmm. I will love you as Kat said I will love you through this I will be here for you 
in the good and the bad it's awesome and that like that all ties into the eastern kind of conceptualization of foods and diet and nutrition because it's all tied in with your mentality all of it because you're like all of life is you know there's all these different facets but it's like all one big organism thing like everything is connected so Mm. you know we talk about this in our bodies how our our mental state and our emotions and our physical bodies are so intertwined it's all one thing we usually think of mind and body as two separate things but it's it's literally one thing like your brain is just as much of an organ as your like liver is and it just it seems a lot louder because we give a lot more attention to it and I just think it's yeah it's just so incredible to get more sensitive to these things and just as we are talking about earlier how like we'll read these like spiritual books who give us tips and share their experiences of how to get more like spiritually healthy which usually is uh more related to like get more mentally healthy Mm -hmm. and emotionally healthy but in the same way we have all these experts these health experts teaching us how to get physically healthy and in that same way we can't just take on their experience say like this is how I should be like we have to experience that for ourselves and I think that that's a really good metaphor to learning how to experience something for yourself more spiritually because like the physical is more concrete and we can maybe learn more easily for some people learn more easily like that you know a certain food for someone might be great for their health but another person no and so just because one person's sharing their experience, that doesn't mean that it fits you. Yeah, which is, like, hard because, <clears throat> like, you see our society today is, like, so much about what you see other people doing. It's all about comparison. Like, as human beings, all we really want to do is, like, self-compare. It's just, like, natural. Like, how do I get better by watching someone who I see as better? Mm-hmm. And so, like seeing what other people do and what may work for them you don't even know if it's working for them like it could not be working for them but they like there's this picture of health and like beauty and um this person may fit that picture but you don't know what the heck's going on inside of them or like what their body is saying to them their body could be saying please feed me more or like oh my gosh you're feeding me way too much or like i think you might be intolerant to dairy like you know um so following what someone else our bodies are so different and I don't think I think that that's obvious and that's said all the time but people don't think about that they they like see a food as healthy or not good or good or bad and if someone that they kind of look up to is eating a certain way or like is is moving their body in a certain way they feel like they have to follow that and that's so not true like I, I don't even know I have crazy digestion issues TMI maybe but like it sucks and I've grown into them and I've been so frustrated by my body because it doesn't feel right a lot of the time and I'm not necessarily attuned to what that what causes it I know that my body can be out of whack and I'm in the process of figuring it out but I'm figuring out for myself and I'm figuring it out by trial and error on my own and there's I, no I, rush. It's there's no rush. I mean, it would be nice to like not be uncomfortable on some days when I feel like my stomach is like a woolly mammoth. But like you know, whatever. You give yourself grace and you move on. And people have trouble doing that. Like they can't. They they feel like they can't. I feel like they're like stuck in a failure now, and it's gonna be a quick fix or it's gonna be nothing. Yeah, and, and I, it sets you up for failure. I don't know because even if you are on the right path like it's it's never a quick fix you got to continue down that path yeah and going back to like eastern medicine and kind of the way that they look at things it's there's so many different ways that you can address different problems but it's all preventative and it takes so much time because you don't you would rather like prevent it long term than like deal with an issue short term and then have it pop up or manifest in a different way after you deal with it in the, with like a medicine or pill or yeah, something like, like I'd that. I'd rather not be eating foods with a lot of cholesterol that are going to clog my arteries so I don't have to have a coronary bypass. Like I would rather just not clog my arteries in the first place. Right. Yeah. So you could avoid it altogether. Yeah. But people people don't can't grasp that necessarily. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Oh, darn." the sad the standard american diet like i'm probably gonna get this 
you don't have to yeah that's your choice that's your choice man like but i think that people just aren't educated Mm -hmm. i think that it i think that eastern medicine also is like coming a lot more to light but like it's like kind of like a statement or like a like sort of like fashion it's like ooh, this is health and vitality and like all of these big companies are like i'm gonna make this super expensive because you'll all pay for it because yeah. it's the cool thing to do yeah. which is so sad because just rub it's... this essential oil on your foot and bam your diabetes are gone <laughs> right i mean and like they do have some like pretty whack um like uh claims but some of it is really true and like mm-hmm. but people are profiting off of that in with bad intention like they just want to make money off of it and that turns so many people off like that's eastern medicine is such a beautiful practice there's so much to it and when you're like putting a price on it no one's no one's gonna like really truly believe that did this turn off no i think just the dishwasher the fridge sound turned off oh my gosh that that tripped me out for a second no we're still rolling guys (laughs) i first uh what was i saying (laughs) Uh, how uh, eastern medicine kind of the uh, its value isn't Mm. so yes yeah we're taking eastern medicine and westernizing it by putting a price on it Mm. which is like no and something that's so beautiful about ayurveda is so when the british uh colonized india back in the day i don't know dates but when they colonized india they saw ayurveda they saw the indian healing system the indian medicine system so there was like mind health which was yoga and then there was body health which was ayurveda and they were like brother and sister and uh when britain colonized they saw like all these practices as kind of like evil because it wasn't like Catholicism or Christianity or whatever so Ayurveda really went underground so none of the Indian hospitals continued to operate in the way that they did and so the way that they were able to carry on this tradition of Ayurveda was in the kitchen with the food and that's why we hear so much about Ayurvedic foods because they're like okay well we can't like explicitly practice our medicine in the way that we might practice our medicine in a hospital but like the one thing that we can do is like how we cook food we can still incorporate um ayurveda into the kitchen yeah that's so cool i didn't know that yeah i mean i yeah that's so neat i mean what are you are you more vata kapha so pitta? i'm i mean we all have all three so mm-hmm. vata pitta kapha these are they're called the three doshas and everyone has all three in the same it's just a label to help you understand yourself a little bit better um just in the same way that like i'm a leo or that i'm yeah, <laughs> I don't know, like those kind of like categories that you'll, you'll give yourself. But um, I guess some of the characteristics of kapha are usually people who are more like they have more like rounded features. And so they kind of have like bigger eyes and uh, like the angles of their bodies aren't as sharp. And they usually have like really like thick, long hair. It's like they're kind of like more like juicy or something eliza's kapha. eliza's kapha yeah and so and then the way that that manifests in your personalities so you're like super loving and super soft you're like this like mother or this like loving Sweet. energy yeah. and again like some people are super super kapha so that that's really loud or sometimes you know you the way that they present um is more like balanced for all three but we all have all three in us um and then pitta which is like what i primarily am it's like people who are like more athletically built and they're like super like fiery and they like speak like they talk a lot more and they're like really passionate a lot of action a lot of fire so like pizza is associated with fire as um kapha is experienced with like more earth and then there's also vata which is uh air so these people are a lot more slim and they might like be more like dry people (laughs) like i don't know like they need to like moisturize more (laughs) But you have pizza in you too. Yes. I yeah. Do. Um, and they're like more airy. So like anxiety is a big marker mm-hmm. for people with uh, vata. Whereas anger is something more common with uh, pizza. And then for uh, kapha, more depression, which is interesting. So interesting yeah. to like think about and us can... three, you, me, and Eliza. Yeah. It's so, so true. Yeah. So true. Um, and yeah so I'm more 
uh, I'm mostly pitta, but I have a lot of vata too. Mm. And then I have, I think I have the least amount of kapha, but it's still there. And like, there's still different ways in which I can get really kapha-y if it's uh, out of balance. Hell yeah. And that's, that's what it is. Like the Ayurvedic kind of scale. It's like you're, you're in balance. Like I think that ideal correct me if I'm wrong mm-hmm. but you want to be equal in all three but like you naturally are heavier on one or two um like I said I'm naturally vata and that's that was something really cool to explore when we were in Bali so when we were in Bali all of the food was Ayurvedic food and it felt so good and like I took pictures do you remember I took yeah. pictures of like literally every single menu for every from every single restaurant that we went to and I was like I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna create this for myself because I feel so amazing um that didn't happen because it's like pretty incredible the way that they make it's these so things complex, yeah. it's so complex and like but it, it, your, your body is able to process it like perfectly mm-hmm. but um yeah it's just a really cool way of thinking about nutrition just another tool from like eastern medicine yeah so it's so cool because like with these doshas like it's like how your body works and how your body functions how your mind works how your mind functions like how you're showing up in life whether that be your job your relationships like your relationship with yourself um and then also yeah the food you eat so people who are vata are more likely to want to just eat like like little small portions and like a lot of fruit and a lot of like like little like nuts and stuff to make them feel light Mm because they they want to feel more light but that's where they get imbalanced because it's too much lightness and you need to like eat a loaf of bread and like yeah come or down. i think like something that they talk about commonly is to like eat cooked food mm-hmm. um which i don't enjoy doing like i like raw things they just feel better and i like the textures and like i don't know but like when i do eat cooked food and i eat well-balanced cooked meal it feels pretty great I just you. yeah exactly um and that's interesting to know it's not to say that I do that all the time because it's I'm I'm lazy and it's nice to just eat a whole like I, I don't know like I like to eat a whole head of lettuce just with like some sauce or something some hummus oh my god I love the crunch so good it's so good but like mm. you know that's not <laughs> You can't eat that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You got to, like, put attention into it. No, definitely. And, yeah, it's so interesting, like, the way that you need to bring yourself down. Like, you could do it with food. You could do it with, like, your mentality. You can mm-hmm. do it with, like, the way that you're moving your body. Um, and then, like, with pizza, uh, we're supposed to stay away from, like, spicy foods and, like, super, like, hot foods sometimes because that can, like, make the pizza, like, get us, like, more, like, worked out because we have a lot of energy Mm -hmm. um and it's funny like I like a little bit of spice but I feel like that's something that I I recognized early on is like no 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 that's like too much like I can't have too much spice or I can't have foods that are like too hot so like for me to like cool me down because usually like my anger it doesn't come out as anger it just comes out with me kind of being like frustrated or Mm -hmm. irritated or annoyed and so no one else really sees that except for me because it's like internal and the way that I present is usually like very like nice but inside I'm like I'll be like frustrated at things or irritated um but I need to cool myself down so I like eating a lot of like cold foods and a lot of like fruit and stuff like that smoothies smoothies yeah um because it like cools me down and it it I need more vata and kapha to like bring me down so I'll eat less kind of like snack foods so like more processed things like aren't good for me like mm-hmm. I shouldn't be eating like a lot of like chips and like cereal and stuff like that so like to balance out my pizza like I need like more fruits I need more vata foods and I need more uh kapha foods so like I need to eat being like eating like grains like whole grains like a potato oatmeal. or like oatmeal like those really help me and that's something that I've gotten a lot in tune with like you know for a vata person eating more processed foods again like there's a threshold on what process could be like you can have a really healthy granola bar or you can have like a really healthy like cracker but just like for me it's just better for me to eat more whole foods Mm -hmm. neither is right or wrong but 
yeah so for me just like eating like a plain like sweet potato like that hits the spot like oh <laughs> sweet potato yeah you ever just put a little almond butter on a roasted sweet what? potato i have not <gasps> cat you're missing out oh my god like I'll you do know that i mean speak. sweet potato right yeah sweet and putting a little bit of like almond butter in it oh my god <gasps> and even even sometimes it's a little like ooh, little secret mm. a little bit of maple syrup on top of it i it's have like, done that oh my god wow. like <laughs> oh my god so good see and that might sound disgusting to someone but like try it <laughs> just try it don't knock it to try it uh yeah but it, it's so interesting and then like with kapha people who are really kapha they need to eat more vata and more pitta foods because people who are imbalanced in kapha they need to get themselves going they need some pitta mm. like they need someone to like shove like you know be like hey like get out of bed like you lazy fuck like that's what they need oh my video ended that's okay okay should i turn no nah, it's fine i'll just keep the audio going okay. turn it back on how after. long has it have we been talking dude like i think an hour and a half we'll oh, close gosh. it we'll okay. close it in a yeah. sec yeah um it's just good combos guys it's just good combos. what are you gonna do what it well what are you gonna do what are oh. you gonna do when your conversation's so good you just can't just keep talking. doing it exactly <sighs> well maybe we should wrap it up okay let's go to the do beach you, let's go to the beach beach um yeah well do you have anything else you want to say any closing statements closing statements <clears throat> um kind of just like a last minute gratitude for mm-hmm. you and for this place that you've given you've given me the opportunity to visit and you are the person who gave me all of this space to kind of like come into my own I'm like literally stepping into shoes that feel like they fit so well right now Mm. and you gave me that space and I'm so grateful for that and for this time I didn't give it to you you just saw it you gave you you did stop don't deflect my thank you (laughs) acknowledgement and I love you and this podcast is so cool like this is amazing to share my experience to listen to other people's experience I am so proud of you for creating this (laughs) and for being here and like you're such an inspiration cat so I guess my closing is thanking you for being a light and for like being such an inspiration holding space for me for yourself and for everyone else I'm very grateful for you and for our friendship wow I don't even know what to say just know that everything you're saying like I'm reflecting back to you thank you so same, much same. I'm accepting it too <laughs> thank you I'm accepting it it's but the true true it's the true true if you guys get the reference you get it no one's gonna get it it's not we an will. inside joke it's a reference it's a true true it's a movie that's your hint <laughs> no but i really don't want you to leave today i don't want to leave but i also like i don't want you to leave but at the same time like i want you to because that's like you want to watch me i want to watch you yeah. like i'm so excited to watch you like what a this. blessing that we've been able to have these two weeks together Woo. I'll say. Yeah. And now we're going to part ways and then we'll reconnect in a little bit and we'll keep each other updated throughout the process of these next few months. And it's going to be a beautiful thing. It's two little flowers growing. I got like seven flowers growing on me right Mm -hmm. now. You too. It's Mm -hmm. awesome. So excited. And some are going to die and then some, you know, spread the seeds. There's rebirth and that's the natural process that has to happen. And that's just currently just like tending our gardens yes oh the gardening reference oh yes yeah our our uh, flowers are like none you have ever seen before right now this is some crazy species guys oh my god botanists gotta get They're over here funky 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 flowers new species all right well i'm gonna i have just some, like some closing things to say um you know my dudes follow this human thing on instagram the uh handle is this human thing so shouldn't get too lost trying to find that same goes for facebook this human thing uh there's not really anything too special on facebook it's just the exact same content that's on instagram it's just what do you prefer follow uh if you want to support the show there are a few ways in which you can do so you can subscribe to my patreon i have the link in the show notes Um, Or you can leave a review and a comment, 
or wait, that's the same thing. You can leave a review and a rating and you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Um, and if you do that, at least for like the time being, I'll send you a sticker. So just send me a DM and say, hey, cat, I left a review and I'll be like, right on. What's your address? I'm going to send you a sticker. Um, and also, I just wanted to plug this again. Like my friend Neil has this uh organization this nonprofit that he started with some of his buds called swim do like swim like you're swimming and then do like do uh and it helps people in bali in indonesia learn how to swim because even though they're on an island uh in southeast asia drowning is one of the leading causes of death because people just don't learn how to swim and so if you want to check out swimdo.org and make a donation that would that would be awesome just check it out support him um send me your questions so i can answer them on the show send me your feedback for the show you know if you're like ooh, like why do you do this or oh you should do this i'm all for it give me your feedback i want to know uh and yeah we have new episodes that come out every monday uh follow us on the social so you stay updated with all the latest things uh you can also check out the website kls.co slash podcast look at the show page there uh yeah audrey do you have any plugs not really (laughs) um i have instagram but i'm really not on it too much or i try not to be you can go stalk her if you want you can my name is audsy one a-u-d-s-y one and it's supposed to sound like artsy like when i made it i was like oh Oh, artsy i did not because it doesn't sound like artsy at all all i just thought it was a cute little nickname no oh my god no god please don't Please don't call me Aussie. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Wow. Well, thank you once again, Audrey, for like such a good episode. I just love how it, like all of these episodes, like it literally just feels like we're talking because we are. It's so like this cool. is a genuine conversation that we're having right now. We're like not trying to like filter anything. Yeah. Um, which is great. And it's just so nice to like have these authentic conversations. And we're speaking about what's like so relevant to us right now, which just makes it more authentic and yeah well guys uh whatever you're doing keep doing it with love keep exploring this this crazy life keep doing your thing peace in peace out sorry guys the video cut off uh so this is just a little outro thanks for listening look at this little snowflake um yeah we can just pause for a pick gonna screenshot one of these and like I don't know cute okay well let's do like one where we're just smiling so we can have at least one cute one okay that's probably good Ooh. Woo. adios mi amor